minds of course the free will is limited but we do have free will and therefore the reason the Creator Allah gave us free will so the Creator Allah can see who chooses to be grateful who chooses to become a Muslim and be a Muslim and stay a Muslim and worship the Creator as a Muslim and experience death as a Muslim and therefore one day with the Creator Allah's mercy and permission can enter paradise. So this is important to understand. Free will is real, free will is a fact. Without free will you can't actually do anything. Without free will you may as well be a zombie. Without free will it's like you yeah you 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 won't be able to function in your daily routines, in your daily life, in work. I mean you need free will to make decision making. Uh, you need free will for decision making. You need free will to um, do mathematics, to think. I mean, if you don't have free will, you actually can't think. And if you can't think, then you can't come up with creative ideas. So no free will, no creative ideas. Therefore, no Einstein, no Isaac Newton. You see my point? So, yeah, I don't know what Sam Harris, you know, uh, I mean, you know, I, I think Sam Harris deliberately chooses to be logical, so does Richard Dawkins and, you know, the likes of them. So, um, yeah, so you see, the Quran, yeah, Islam is perfect. You may wonder why, because Islam is, Islam is the correct guidance from the Creator Allah. Yeah, it it goes against our desires. Islam has deterrence, uh, no alcohol, no sex before marriage, no intoxicants. And yeah, I would like to um, mention that Sikhism do talk about no alcohol and no drugs, but Sikhism have actually taken that, they have stolen it from uh, uh, um, Islam. You see, in the past, you see, Islam is from the beginning. Islam is from the beginning. The first person, the first prophet is and was Prophet Adam, alayhi wasallam, peace be upon him. And the final uh, uh, messenger and prophet is and was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And you see, in between, the Creator Allah sent thousands and thousands. Uh, I think one hadith says over 120,000 messengers and prophets. And they all came, they all went to their people with good news and a warning. Uh, the good news is basically la ilaha illallah, meaning there is none worthy of worship except the Creator Allah. And the, uh, and the warning is that whoever you are, if you don't worship the Creator Allah as a Muslim, yeah, if you don't worship the Creator Allah as a Muslim, um, then then it is a punishment for you. And the punishment is, of course, in hellfire forever. Having said this, the Creator Allah knows best. You see, so it is important to remember that Islam is not a new way of life. Islam is not a, a new religion. Islam is from the beginning, from the first person, from the first man, Adam, peace be upon Adam. And this is very important to understand. And also, you see, we shouldn't forget that we have been given free will. And the reason for the free will is to, to, to worship the Creator Allah, to, to have the choice. And the, you see, the Creator Allah wants to 
see this uh, genuine choice. The choice has to be uh, genuine. Meaning, because you see, the Creator Allah has created millions and millions and millions of angels. And angels, they worship Allah 24 7. You know, they worship Allah you know, all the time. And so, the, what I'm trying to say is, angels are, have not been given free will. As in, uh, you know, like in regards to to disobey the Creator Allah, so not yeah, has not been given free will, and so the Creator Allah gave us free will because the Creator Allah wants to see, wants to experience that you know. Uh, the the genuine uh, love, the genuine worship. So when I uh, choose to worship the Creator Allah as a Muslim, and I am happy to do that without any force, uh, that makes the Creator Allah really happy, because I mean that is the reason for the free will. You see my point, because. You see, the Creator Allah is free of all needs. The Creator Allah is extremely powerful, the Lord of mercy, the most merciful. And the Creator Allah doesn't need anything. The Creator Allah doesn't need our worship. The Creator Allah doesn't need anything from us. The cre it is the Creator Allah who created us. But you see, the Creator Allah wants to see who is genuine in his or her worship and this is the reason for the free will it's amazing and you know when when someone anyone who has free will they are independent in their thinking they are you know autonomous it's amazing like what i'm trying to say is the free will makes me real yeah, it is the free will which is programmed into my um, soul and therefore into my consciousness and awareness. Yeah, the, the free will makes me real and, and it's amazing. And so don't forget the free will is also part of the earthly examination, especially the negative nature part of the free will. We shouldn't, you know, choose arrogance and ignorance and we shouldn't, you know, use arrogance and therefore disobey the Creator Allah. No, 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 that's, that's you know, going to, of course, take you into hellfire. The idea is to, to use the positive nature within the dual nature, within the free will, to to understand, of course, logically, that it is the Creator Allah who has given us basically everything. I mean, you know, the life that, that I have and that you have is permanent. And long as you worship the Creator Allah as a Muslim, one day, and of course, it is important you experience uh, death as a Muslim and therefore from now up until whenever your death uh, your experience of death will come y you you want to be a practicing Muslim yeah read Salah do Zikr fasting charity you know one day uh, maybe you go to Hajj if you are uh, have the money and if you are able physically and so you know living a good uh, practicing uh, Muslim life and therefore uh, experiencing uh, a Muslim death, uh, death as a Muslim uh, with Allah's uh, permission, with Allah's mercy one day you and I uh, inshallah with Allah's mercy can enter paradise. And you see in paradise, you know, 
it's it's amazing. I mean, that's the idea. The final destination for anyone should be paradise. You see, the question is, what is permanent success? What is permanent success? And permanent success is you want to get into paradise. Because once you're in, once you in paradise, you you are you made it. You are successful. Yeah, the Creator Allah says this in the Quran. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, uh, w once you're inside Jannah, once you're inside paradise, you you are a winner. You know, the Creator Allah says you are a winner. Uh, basically, the Creator Allah says. Uh, those who believe, meaning Muslims in the Quran, and do good deeds, uh, the winners will be the successful ones. And so what is permanent success is living a good Muslim life, experiencing death as a Muslim, and getting into paradise. This is really important. You know, uh, there is no point you being a non-Muslim uh, trillionaire. There is no point you being a non-Muslim celebrity. There is no point you being a non-Muslim famous and rich person because none of that will help you on judgment day. And you know, the mini judgment day, there is the mini judgment day, what I call the time of experiencing death. You see, when you, as a non-Muslim, will experience death, you will know immediately that you, you will end up in the fire of Jahannam. And so the, before the fire of Jahannam, there is the punishment of the grave. And the punishment of the grave is terrifying. And, and it, the, the punishment gets worse, so much worse, in, in, in hellfire. Having said this, the Creator Allah knows best. Now you see, my intention, my intention wasn't to scare you, but you see, I have to uh, tell you as it is. I have to explain to you that hellfire is no joke. Hellfire, the punishments in hellfire is extremely overwhelming. You see, your skin will be burnt, and you will be given new skin continuously. Snakes and scorpions will bite you. Hot water will be poured down your mouth. A hammer will come down on your feet. I'm paraphrasing, but that is, you know, just the, you know, beginning of the punishment in hellfire, and it's continuous. And if you experiencing, if you experience death, don't forget we don't die. We taste death. And if you experience death as a non-Muslim, then you are stuck in hellfire forever. Having said this, the Creator Allah knows best. But I have to be very clear. You see, I have come across some of the students of Islam and some of the scholars in Islam, of course, on YouTube. And I don't want to name any names. Basically, they try to appease the non-Muslims regarding Islam. What I'm trying to say is me appeasing you, meaning, you know, I can't say, well, you know, it will be okay if you die as a non-Muslim. No, it won't. And please don't, you know, take my words and put it into, sorry, don't take my words and you know, make it out of context and, and you know, just, you know, basically try to, uh, you know, character assassinate or something like that. But that's what actually happens, yeah? One thing I need to make uh, clear is, you know, appeasement, yeah? I don't want to appease you. I don't want to come across, well, okay, you can be a Christian, it will be okay, or you, will, you can be a Buddhist and it will be okay when you die. No, it won't, okay? The only way into Jannah is to die as a Muslim, meaning to taste death as a Muslim. 
don't forget, we don't die, we taste that. And I wanted to, you know, clear this. This is really important. I, as a Muslim, invite you to become a Muslim, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, look into Islam, so why Islam, read the Quran, uh, understand Islam, uh, look into Islam, uh, see the new uh, Muslim